You ain't never seen a man turn leg go with his hands. You ain't never seen a man get a queen wet with a glance. What a turn, why whole wide world, mind in my mind. In and out of time, my light shine bright for the blind. Some by the way I do it. 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 Said I'm gonna be a millionaire soon, but I already knew it. I'ma die the bullets fluid. All this winning therapeutic. Some by the way I do it. Some by the way I do it. They be trying to drain my energy up with the battery, is not included. Women trying to be recruited. Let them do it, then I bought it. What is cute, then she fool it. Some by the way I do it. I remember playing ring around the rosy. Now I got a pocket full of OZs. Water dollars, wallet full of old cheese. Got a Glock, a cock and pop a police. Block a block a block a boom, shock a lock a bottle. Shot him while he rock a rosary. Got your mama watching out the nose, please. Sloppy toppy while I'm trying to go sleep. Some by the way I do it, I ball out like a nude is hooping. Or a who's your student? Got the problem, I'm a room is cubic. I'm a superhuman, you a decorated unit fusion. Got the music booming, marijuana got me too much losing. I'm in my room secluded. Let me plug this all. Uh, you know, we got the gathering of the metaphysical masters coming up. June 3rd, uh, Brother Panic. Dr. Phil Valentine and the brother I said the Duke of Tears. I'm going to have Dr. Phil Valentine on the show later this week. Oh, uh, man. Yo, Blue, the topic that Dr. Valentine gave me that he's going to talk about, bro, classic Phil, bro. It reminds me of one up on the frequency, the joint you did with him over a decade ago, bro. Yo, Phil's going in his metaphysical bag, and it's going to be crazy, man. It's it's, go, it's it's gonna be crazy. Phil's gonna show out, man. So shout out to Phil Valentine. Uh, the ticket information is there. Also, the live stream information. You could go to USA Live Stream slash Metaphysical Masters to uh, see the live stream. They talking about it in Atlanta. You know, people is booking their flights. You know what I'm saying? So it's, it's, it's definitely something that people heavily anticipate. They don't want to miss this. You don't want to miss this family. Being in the building is to return to metaphysics. Um, you know, it's everything that you've been asking for. All right? So make sure that the people show up and they show out. All right? Um, yeah. Indeed, indeed. So with that, listen, Blue, man, uh, the people saying, can you talk a little louder, Blue? You sound a little far away, they're saying. Is there any way you could turn up your audio? How's this? Because I, I have my hand on the phone. It might have been blocking the microphone. You hear me better, family? Yeah, they're saying turn up your mic a little bit. So just so. Uh, is it better? Yeah, well, my, my signal, it, it looked like it's coming in better on my end. I don't know about the people. I'm going to wait till they respond. Yeah, ask them. Is this audio better? I was, like I said, I was holding the phone at the bottom. It might be where the microphone is at. Somebody told me that yesterday when I was on the feed. Yeah, they, they saying yeah, they saying it's better, Blue. So, yeah, whatever you did, that's uh, that's good. All right. So, 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 Blue, uh, to talk about this situation with Meek Mill, brother, um... I definitely want to talk about this probation system because it's something that, I mean, it's like a trap. And I don't know if people, I quite don't understand how it works. Of, of, you know, fortunately, I've never been caught up in it or the system. So I need you to really, you know, talk to the people because this is something that has to change eventually. But uh, just to start out, is, is, this a, is this a win for us when you see a brother like Meek Mill being released? Is this a win for us, uh, Blue Pill, when we talk about everything going on with the criminal justice system? Um, this is definitely a, a win for Meek Mill. You know what I'm saying? This is a win for hip-hop. This is a testament to the influence that hip-hop has on not only... Um, you know, a wide genre of, of, of different elements of society. But as we see, it permeates through politics. The politicians are the ones that pretty much got on top of things and got things moving. Now, the politicians are friends with the businessmen. You know what I'm saying? The capitalists. Um, and it's obvious to them that they see our brother Meek more so as a commodity. 
do you think that what we saw was really based on the fact that they think that Meek Mill is such a good guy and he has such a good heart that they wanted to pull out all the stops and help him? No, they see that this guy is a driving force of commerce in his city in particular. And, um, you know, after the Super Bowl run, here they go in the NBA. You know what I'm saying? A very promising team. The views are going to be up. The attendance is going to be up. And if they win, forget about it. So there's a lot of things that we see that are configuring to make this more than just a regular story. Like a lot of, they pulled a lot of punches. It went over a lot of people's heads. It went all the way upstairs. Now in the arena of social justice where, you know, our people constantly complaining about nothing being done in the arena of social justice at all for us as a people, we kind of seen something that we've never seen before. So this still goes to show you that, yeah, pulls, you know, punches can be pulled. There's things that can be done. But how much political clout, how much influence, what sort of friends and power do you have to have to get something actually move forward such as this? You know what I'm saying? So in essence, for hip hop, I think it's a good look. Um, For the city of Philly, it's a wonderful look. For Meek Mill, it is a astronomical look. You know what I'm saying? But in regards to the millions of others who are in the same predicament of him as him, they don't have the same friends or political clout, or they're not commodified in the eyes of you know capitalists like Meek Mill is. You know what I'm saying? I, I don't I don't see them getting any any you know that much more relief or redress. You know what I'm saying? This narrative is going going to continue to play itself out thousands and millions of times over with melanated young men still getting devoured by the system. Um, hello? Yeah, Blue, you, you uh, went in and out for a second. Go ahead, I hear you now. We could tell that that tweet. Can you hear me? Because your audio was low a second ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. Yeah. We could tell that the uh, the tweet that was sent out that was a public relations tweet. You know what I'm saying? That's not how Meek Mill writes or speaks. You feel me? So he obviously has his PRs around him as he's supposed to in putting out statements. You feel me? But you know. First thing that he did when he got out, he was courtside supporting his hometown team, supporting his friends and his benefactors, you know, the people who are actually making the calls and putting, you know, and calling in their political favors. You understand what I'm saying? Right. And I don't think that there's nothing arguably wrong with that. We're talking about an entertainer at the end of the day. You know what I'm saying? who has been pulled into the different realms of entertainment. And they're like, look, this guy is, you know what I'm saying? They see his worth. They see his worth. You know what I'm saying? They believe in his movement. And they're willing to invest in that. You know what I'm saying? At least he didn't have to sign a goddamn contract on a piece of napkin for $1.3 million bail. Like two bucks four. Right, right, right. So when... Yeah, blue. Yeah, your your audio is real low, brother Rich. Uh, let me see. On my end, I don't know. The audience probably hears you the same way, but right, I can right. still hear you. It's just low. But I'm tuned in. What you got? Um, what's your question? Yeah. Uh, do can you hear me any better, Blue? Same, but I can still, I can, you know, I can make out what you're saying. Is it is it a is it a stretch, Blue, to hear people call him a political prisoner? Is is it a stretch to say a we a political prisoner just got released from jail, Blue Pill? When we look at his case, we can see that he was the victim, right, of um, heavy-handed politics. The judge in this particular case held a grudge. So in that sense, we could say, yes, this man's freedom has been thwarted by someone 
who not primarily based on the merits of the case, but more so saying, look, I'm just not going to do it. I'm not going to reverse my decision for whatever reason. You know what I'm saying? That was her stipulation, and she did it because she could. So she was abusing her powers as a judicial authority to say, I'm making it personal. So in that sense, yes, there was politics involved. So he can, by proxy, be called a political prisoner, but not in the sense of how we might term it. You know what I'm saying? And it pales in comparisons to other political prisoners that we know about. One of the most famous being uh, Mumia, uh, who's right there in, in Philadelphia as well. Or Pennsylvania, for that matter. So, you know, it pales in comparison to your Mumia or Abu Jamal's of the day. But, you know, in 2018, like, what does a political prisoner even look like? A political prisoner looks like Meek Mill in 2018, goddammit. You feel me? Right, right. That's, 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 that's the best slice of the fuck, you know. I mean, a revolution is, is it has mutated. So, yes, in 2018, Meek Mill would be considered a political prisoner because, you know, that's the politics of the day. You understand? We don't have no movies out here to call for that level of uh, political um, prison. You know what I'm saying? Right, right. Do do you think um what what do you how do you feel about symbolic victories? You know, some people are for it, some people saying it don't says it don't doesn't mean anything for us as a people. Uh what's your thought on this being a symbolic victory? Um what we, we, we can't detract from the fact that it's gonna be looked at as a symbolic victory on many accounts, like I said, for hip hop. It's a symbolic victory for the millennials, the youth that rallied behind Meek Mill. It was a symbolic victory, you know what I'm saying? For the European men that are around him, who now want to receive kudos from the community, it's a symbolic victory for them, you know what I'm saying? For his direct circle of homies, you know what I'm saying? Um, you know, the Jay-Z's and, and Rosses and what have you, it's symbolic to them as well because they went against the system, even though they utilized the system to defeat certain aspects of the system. Um, like Meek Mill, you know, famously said, it's levels to this shit. You dig what I'm saying? And that's what we saw. You know what I mean? We saw that there's levels to this. You know what I mean? They had to go over the judge's head to uh, a more powerful, quote unquote, powerful judicial authority to overrule her. You get what I'm saying? So, yes, it's, it's going to be looked upon as a symbolic victory. There's not too much that we can do about that. Um, now, this young man has a lot of responsibility on his shoulders. You feel me? He has a lot of responsibility. So many people pull for him. And as a result, you know what I'm saying? Uh, we were able to see something like, like I said, that we normally don't see, especially during the Trump administration, you know. And I'm sure that there's going to be a Trump tweet about this. You know what I'm saying? He's probably going to be like, this shit needs to be looked into. I'm, I'm calling on Jeff Sessions to review this case and we need to throw this nigga back in jail. <laughs> don't sleep on it. You know what I'm saying? Because... It's going to gain a lot of traction in the next few days. And they're going to call for judicial review. They're going to want to look at these decisions and find out who made the call. You know what I'm saying? Who pulled the favor? So it's, 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 it's going to come down to, uh, you know, hip-hop versus the higher-ups. You know what I mean? Um, but let me say this. I am it's a wonderful way to see hip hop rally around an artist, right? Who just a minute ago, you know what I mean, kinda like remember all the memes about Meek Mill taking an L? Oh man, Meek yeah, for Mill. like a year, man. Yeah. You know Some people were convinced that Meek the, the the trajectory of his career was 
leading up to the fact that people don't like Meek Mill, that he's unlikable, that his character was unwanted in hip hop, that he's bad for the genre. Feel me? This could have possibly be the best thing to ever happen to Meek Mill in his career. Ironically enough. Right, right. You know what I'm saying? And people were rallying around him and showing this young man that regardless or regardless of what you might be going through in your personal life or how you might view yourself in in, in, in the lens of how hip-hop views you, no, hip-hop loves you. You know what I'm saying? Like, people pull all the stops out, man. And I think that that in itself, that was, that was cool. That was a wonderful thing. You know what I mean? That um, the symbolic victory within itself, if the symbol is, 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 is actually, because like I said, it depends on who's going to be the one that extracts, you know, the, uh, the ownership of this particular symbolic victory. If it's hip hop, if it's the youth, if it's the millennials, the youth of Philadelphia in particular, they're going to say, yo, we did this for me. We can do this for somebody else. Indeed. In general, as a whole, you know what I'm saying? Maybe they might start flexing their political power. Mm -hmm. Same shit. You know, like you said, what about probation reform? You know what I mean? What about the millions of others that's caught up in the system? And we pull some punches for them as well. Mm -hmm. Do you think uh, when, when Blue, you hear me? I hear you now. Okay, when when something like this happens, Blue, um, in a situation where you got these billionaires visiting you, um, helping you get out of prison. Um, you know, appealing to you, patting you on the back, hugging you, writing checks. Do you think something like this will take away from the from the revolution, whatever revolutionary uh, uh, qualities that's in a person to have all of these big wigs approach you and give you money and help you and get you out of jail? Do you do you, do you think Meek feels some type of um uh, uh you know connection to them at this point? he feels a connection he's going to say I owe my life to these people you know he's going to say that they're the ones responsible for moving the needle forward he's thanking the people who rallied in his name but when it all comes down to it like I said they're going to have to identify who can claim the rights to that victory who made the phone call who had the relationship you know what I'm saying who linked on the governor who made this thing happen so yeah he's indebted to those people feel me? He's definitely indebted to his people. Case in point, his ass had his butt in the seat at that game. He ain't even see his fucking son yet, right? Showed up to that game. So, he's indebted to the owners. He's indebted to the city of Philly. He's indebted to the spirit of that city. You know what I'm saying? He's gonna be indebted to his record label to some point because he's, in, you know, he's gonna be indebted to his fans. He has to feed them. So it should be interesting to see, all right, once he spent this brief amount of time in the belly, exposed to whatever he was exposed to, what type of music are we expecting this young man to come out and make? You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Is he still going to make music that's glorifying the very same things that put people behind bars and they crying when you end up behind bars? So it should be interesting to see, you know what I mean? Like, who he really is willing to pay his debt to. You know what I'm saying? Because I'm sure that he was on a uh, bended knee, you know, in that predicament, praying to a higher power. You know what I'm saying? How he going to pay that debt? Right, right, right. Because we all been there. Trust me, I made all kind of packs to crack the motherfucking gates. And miraculously, them gates get cracked. But then when you come home, can you uphold that debt or that oath? You know what I'm saying? Or that deal that you just cut in blood. You feel me? Mm -hmm. And when shit don't pan out, then you start seeing the horror stories that you start seeing when niggas just come home and they be like, damn, someone's not even home for X amount. You, I wonder why. 
Mm -hmm. You know, you know, Blue. When, when when we hear about these, um, when when the police, uh, you know, we see video after video after video of the police killing killing black people. Uh, you know, excessive force against black people. And the first thing a person will say is that you know they they fear us, so that's they do that out of fear. And that's why they treat us the way they treat us, out of fear or out of, you know, whatever they see, the images they see on us on television. What would make this black female judge go so hard at Meek Mill? When you have a sister that goes that hard at a young man that's in his 20s, probably just turned 30, what do you think the reasoning for that, the psychology behind that type of uh, uh, behavior is, Blue? Once again, there's levels to this shit, so... You know, you know, all melanated people are not fans of things that other melanated people stand for or represent. You know what I'm saying? She could be part of the bourgeoisie. You know what I'm saying? She could be a respectable melanated uh, young woman who just doesn't like what, what the brother represents or what she sees he represents. You know, the street element. You know? Um, or she... As was reported, you know what I'm saying? She could have been trying to squeeze him and he resisted and she was just willing to pay him back, you know, as a power play. But she had the ability to flex her judicial powers and she utilized it. And she was unwilling to waver at all, you know, even with all of these people in her face. She still was like, nah, I ain't doing it. You know what I'm saying? So she would have to be interviewed in you know, she would have to have some sort of um, uh, 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 psychoanalytical, uh, you know, um, analysis done to see, you know, you know, like, what is she on? You know what I'm saying? Well, what does her track record speak of? Is she known for serving melanated young men and women and sending them, you know what I'm saying, up north? Like, is that her M.O.? Or is this this one special case where she's extra hard when it comes to Meek Mill? You feel me? She have a hard on for Meek Mill off. So I don't, I don't, I don't really know what would make because I haven't seen too many melanated judges, um, women for that matter, on the bench in my lifetime. So I really don't know. Some of them. Because they're melanated women, some of them feel that they have the onus to really um, go extra hard to play by the book because their peers are looking at them like, oh, you saw, you know what I'm saying? You don't even belong here. You know, you're a woman. You're a black woman. You're going to be uh, patting people on the back and, and slapping them on the wrist. So some of them, they be, they, they judge, they, they do the hatchet job. They be the judge hatchets. You feel me? Mm hmm no, he probably got one of them where she was like, this is her career. Her career is riding on this case. You feel me? If she was to flip-flop on it, it's going to be held against her when she comes up for judicial review. Those people are going to look at her and be like, oh, you folded. You know what I'm saying? This was your most high-profile case. She's going to say, look, I stuck to my guns and whatever she's going to utilize to back that up, that's what she's going to put in front of her. You feel me? We think it seems, and it sounds flimsy, like, oh, he only did this, oh, he only did that. But she could say, well, based on the stipulations of his probation, he shouldn't have done this and he shouldn't have done that. And I have the authority to incarcerate him based on that. You feel me? We're, we, we, we don't talk enough about the fact, you know, we've spoken about it, that, you know, some blew some amazing chances that a regular person, quote unquote, would not get in that situation. You know what I'm saying? Now, there's a lot of things that go into um, that, 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 that kind of um, take this thing out of it. Like, oh, he was only doing wheelies and shit. You know what I'm saying? And all the other stuff. But, you know, being on paper is a sticky trap. You know what I'm saying? And, she obviously utilized that leverage to say, look, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm sticking to the book. I'm doing it by the law. You 
you see what I'm saying? So, you know, again, look at the power of a judge, look at the power of judicial decisions. You know what I'm saying? Look how they can throw your life away and you just forgotten, you just under the bus. Like I said, there's a million people that don't have the clout of a meat mill, that don't have the, the finances to get the lawyers, that don't have friends in high places like that, where, you know, the judge sends you up and that's, that's it. Like, your life is over. You know what I'm saying? I remember our brother True Master telling us about his fights with the judicials, you know, with the judges and how crooked they was. Information that he was able to obtain, speaking to the fact that the majority of them judges on the bench in New York don't even belong here. You know what I'm saying? They wasn't even rightfully put there. So they're occupying that seat unlawfully and slaying people. You know? So, shit. It's a lot going on. Indeed, indeed. You know, when I was young, I remember being about um, 20 years old, and um, I had lost my ID, uh, wallet with ID, um, some of my, you know, my driver's license, a lot of important information. So I was with my uncle at the time, and uh, he told me, he, he, went, he took me to the precinct to report it missing, just in case anybody returned it, that, you know, whatever, um, it could get returned to me. Because there was a lot of important stuff in there. So I went to the precinct to report a missing ID. And it was a black female on there that as I'm reporting that I lost my, 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 my wallet and my stuff, money in it, stuff like that. Um, she asked for my ID. Uh, she asked for some uh, another form. Did I have another form of ID? I think I lost my license, something, and I I had another form of ID. She asked for it, and she ran a warrant on me to see if I had warrants. And I was shocked and amazed, like completely nasty. I'm talking about was just I never thought I would get treated that way by just reporting something stolen or missing. So the only thing I could conjure up in my mind, and I was talking to my uncle about, it, I'm 20 years old, is that. You know, something had to have some black man had to do something to her before in the past for her to treat another black man like that. So do you think this is a situation uh, where, you know, these sisters, you know, baby daddy issues or, you know, molestation issues where they see these young black men with their pants hanging off their ass. They coming in the court and they're like, yeah, I'm gonna get this nigga today. Yeah, I'm, I'm take my anger out on this nigga. Do you think? Is any of that? Do you see any of that with this situation or with situations similar to this? Like, does she have an axe to grind? You think, you know, uh, generally for young black males and, you know, Meek Mill was the nigga king of young black males. So she's like, hey, if I want to strike a blow in the hearts of nigga thuggery, <laughs> what better way to do it but to get the spokesman of nigga thuggery, Meek Mill. It's a possibility. It's a possibility, and um, you know, I've 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 heard stories, you know, about certain judges that have acts to grind, and they've been, uh, you know, like especially in the domestic violence uh, courts, you, you'll find a judge that has been a victim of domestic abuse, and they're gonna slay you. You know what I'm saying? And there's been other situations where certain judges have been victimized or their family have been victimized of said crime. So when you come up and stand up before that judge accused of that crime, they're going to slay you. You know what I'm saying? And I think that um, even criminals should be protected against that level of prejudice because it's unwarranted. You know what I mean? And it's all based on somebody's personal decisions about what amount of time should be afforded to you. You know, these people are not following guidelines. They're going outside of the guidelines. And they're using personal discretion to, uh, you know, carry out vendettas. And that's what the shit amounts to. You got people sitting up rotting away because the judge didn't wake up on the right side of the bed. You hear that all the time. When you're in the pens about to go upstairs, they know what judge they want to go in front of. Cause they be like, yo, such and such, you know what I'm saying? They woke up on the wrong side of it. The like, they know how to tell what mood, what judge is in, and 
you know, if this judge is known for slaying brothers and all of that, like, they be having to dossier on everybody. So, that's whack. You know what I'm saying? That you should even be subject to that. That, that should be the level of your worries. You know what I mean? That somebody's personal decisions to hold such a heavy sway over your life. It shit should be automated or something like that. Man. It shouldn't be to the personal discretion of another person. Indeed, and indeed, indeed. I, 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 I have an experience in the judicial system, you know, um, that I'm not proud of. You know what I'm saying? But I've been in front of a lot of judges. And I've been able to sway a lot of judges. So I know that it's all based on personal decisions, personal inflections. You know, um, I remember when I was incarcerated, I was doing a vid in Virginia. I got back in court under something called reconsideration. I wrote a letter to the judge and I swayed him with my writing. And I got back in court. He took time away from me and allowed me to come home. You know what I mean? This was all based on his personal decisions. I have to. I had to appeal to this motherfucker. This wasn't necessarily to the court. It wasn't about law. It was about how he felt. You know what I'm saying? And he could substantiate saying, oh, I'm going to take time away because we found this out or we found that out. Like, I pointed some things out. They do something called a PSI, which is a pre-sentence investigation. And it's a point system. Like, they do this in the feds. You know, to add your points up. You know what I mean? If you were convicted of this, or if you graduated, or if you didn't graduate, or, you know, stupid stuff like that. So, these are the things that the judges can say are the reasons why they're giving you an asshole full of time, or why they're able to take time back. But what it really amounts to is the judge is making a personal decision based on your character. Whether they like you or not, whether they're whether they're willing to give you a second chance at life, you understand? What the fuck is God around for? <laughs> you got somebody in the black world playing God. Should make more sense. Make more sense. You know I me? Mean? Right, right. Like, just again, if nothing else. Look at his case and look at the unwillingness by this judge, even with the prosecutor siding with Meek Mill. The unwillingness from this judge, right, to, to let up at all. No reprieve. Nah, I'm not trying to hear that. So, again, just fathom with millions of people that look like us go through. You know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. the is in the coffin. It's a wrap. There's no redress. You're not getting back in court. And none of that time back. You understand? Mm-hmm. You're fucking sending people into slavery. Hands down. With, with, with astronomical numbers, man. I've told the story before. I remember being incarcerated in 95. And this is when they just changed they, the, the Bill Clinton, that, that shit that he brought about just kicked in, you know. Or at least they was utilizing the pilot program in Virginia. It was called Truth and Sentencing, Zero Tolerance. Okay? So they was giving 19-year-old melanated men 35 years for the sale of dime crack cocaine. Two sales to undercovers. He was in there for 35 years, bro. Wow. 5% of that time. Ugly. You feel me? This shit makes me like, it, it, it just the weighs heavy on my heart just to even talk about it because I remember, you know, these young dudes and they was on joke time. Like, they didn't even, they didn't even settle in that, that their life was hit like that. It was concerned with Linking up with their peoples and niggas from around their way, stupid shit. Playing spades. I'm like, bro, you got 35 years. You're not even going to the law library. 35 years? <laughs> mm. So, again, 
again, like, there are people that are watching this that have experienced this. There definitely are people that are watching this that have family in the same predicament. And like you said, symbolic victories like this give people faith. You know what I'm saying? But, you know, who got a hundred racks with top-notch lawyers that can get state justices on the phone and all of that? Your lawyer might be playing golf with them and shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, not too many people got that level of pull. So, these are open wounds in our community that we have to live with. Because a lot of our sons, a lot of our daughters are not coming home. They're not going to get those breaks. These miracles are not going to happen for them. They're not going to get visited by Bob Brad and shit like that. You know what I mean? So, yes, I do hope that man utilizes his platform to bring about a level of change and to speak for the less unfortunate. You know what I'm saying? for the people that have no remedy and have no way out. You know what I mean? He represents a person who has been afforded a second chance at life again. You know what I'm saying? We done seen this nigga die and be reborn more times in a little bit. You know what I mean? Right, right. He created the space that he now occupies wins and losses. That was the name of his last album, right? <laughs> yeah. He just turned his loss into hell of a win. You hear what I'm saying? You know, Drake needs to do the God Plans remix with this nigga, man. <laughs> that shit all the way official. You feel me? He's undefeatable. Teflon, huh? Teflon. You know, uh... I got uh, one more question for you, Bloom. It's, I know it's two in the morning. I uh, appreciate the brothers and sisters that's in the chat uh, yeah, rocking with us. You know, and, and let me, I want to reiterate, because we get beat up when we do shows about celebrity. You know what I'm saying? Even though these are people that the majority of the audience have either listened to or their children listen to or they watch them on TV or they're familiar with their story. They're, they're the ones in the public eye, okay? Um, Meek Mill, right? And we spoke about this. We spoke about sports teams embody the spirit of the city, okay? It's more than just sports sometimes, right? The team embodies the spirit of the city. This artist in particular embodies the spirit of the city. Philadelphia is a gritty city. It's resilient. It's blue collar. Okay? It, you know, roll your sleeves up, knuckle up, get busy. This young man symbolically represents that level of resilience. Like I said, we have seen him take a lot of L's and rebound from them continuously. It's almost like he has been touched by the hand of God. You think what I'm saying? Now people can say what they want. I'm just saying, I recognize it. You know? I know people that fall on their face and can't get up. I've seen this dude fall on his face a bunch of times. And he gets up. He's the people's champ. The people love him. When he's, they, it's like they love him more when he's losing. You understand? That shit powers him up. He always messes it up when he's doing good. But when he's doing bad, He's at his best. Okay? So, you know, I, I just wanted to um, point that out. That, uh, you know, the, the brother's very resilient and we're looking at something that symbolizes more than just a story about a rapper in Philadelphia, you know what I'm saying, being uh, granted a uh, bail. It ain't, like he, it ain't like he got the case thrown out. You know what I'm saying? He got bail. And he didn't have to sign on the napkin for 1.3 and sign to the fucking devils. You know what I mean? But we ain't know what he had to do. That ain't a Leave it there. So, um, yeah, so last question, Blue. Um, I was, you know, I'm on Instagram and, you know, I'm, I follow a brother named Raspy Rawls, and the brother was talking about 
a way to stop police terrorism and all of this violence we see that, you know, police causing um, is to attack the system that insures them. Mm -hmm. I want to know, what, what do you think about that concept? The insurance companies that, uh, that, 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 you know, support the police, that, that, that cover the police. I wholeheartedly uh, support that brother's sentiments. And what he's saying is that you need to go after the bonds. You know what I'm saying? Because if you go after the bonds that insure these officers, then you're gonna get a you're gonna get a level of redress, right? Financially, right? A judiciary redress. You start hitting them in the pocket. You start putting liens on them. You start putting liens on their property. Okay? You start hitting up the very thing. Their animating force for the most part are is their insurance, these documents that empower them. And allow them to do the things that they're doing because when we strip it down, and of course, he's pulling out of a Moorish playbook that understands that all of this is based on commerce, right? You're getting charged with a crime, you know what I mean? You know what I'm saying? You're sitting in a cell and they're detracting finances um, from your incarceration and they're tapping up your. Uh, versus, if, you know, all that stuff. It, you know, they're floating your bonds on the open market. You know what I'm saying? Basically, you being incarcerated. So there's ways to get at them as well. They're bonded as well. You know what I'm saying? So you go after the bond. You have to make them feel it financially. You go after the FOP. You know, you go after the people that are protecting them, the fraternal orders of police. You know what I mean? You got to hit these particular places and, um, you know, uh, I don't necessarily want to call them soft spots. They're soft spots because people are not hitting them. And they don't even recognize or realize that they exist. All right? But before any of that can happen in these situations, you know, they settle out civilly. You know, they cut a check and give it to the families. You know, your child getting killed by police can net you some millions out here, unfortunately. You know what I'm saying? So, this shit is ugly and sad. But, yeah. You know, people start hitting them, hitting the insurance and throwing liens on them. You definitely will see some things change. You, you, you'll see a change in tone. You'll see a change in activity. You know what I'm saying? You'll see some prosecutions. You'll see them want to come to the table and talk about it. But until that happens, you're not going to see any. You're going to see more blood. Indeed, indeed. Uh, leave your contact info, Blue. We about to wrap it up. Leave your contact info for the people, Blue Pill. Uh, Blue Pillar forty four. All right, at Blue Pillar forty four. IG Blue Pillar forty four at Gmail. Yo, Blue. You know you said that at the forty four minute mark, Blue. <laughs> That's funny. At the forty four minute mark, you started talking about Blue Pillar forty four and all that. I just thought that was. Ironic, but go ahead, brother. <laughs> My God, you know, Meat Mill, that's, that's two M, M and M. That's his, he got his, he got his 44 energy going on. So, shout out to that brother, uh, Soul Go Biz, S O L E G O L D B I Z dot com. I'm wearing a crown. I just got this from my brother, 19 Keys. Yeah. I was inspired by my brother, brother Rich. He had that crown on in the, um, Black Magic video. All right. If you haven't already, go and download or go and purchase the Holy Ghost EP. All right. That's at canbuythemusic.com, right? Yeah. Twinthealbum.com. That double CD is out. All right. Uh, Paranormal.com, of course. All right. Peace, love, and light. Let them know where they can buy the tickets for June 3rd. Cause people have been asking me that as well. Right, right, right. Well, they could um call me if they want additional information, 646-472-4219, but I'm going to put it on the screen right now. Uh, you go to the website, www.blackmagic.eventbrite.com for tickets. I'm going to have Dr. Valentine on the program later this week. going to have Brother Panic on the program later this week. As well as I say the Duke of Tears on the program later on this week. Like I said in the beginning of the show, Dr. Valentine told me the name of the topic 
of what he's going to talk about on June 3rd. And it's something, man, that we haven't seen in years, man. So it's going to be something that the family don't want to miss. Uh, Brother Panic's going to be dropping it. I see it's going to be dropping it. So for those who appreciate the metaphysical information, make sure you're in the building for that day. Um, besides that, uh, anything else you want to let the people know about, Blue? No, I'm good. So on that note, family, I want to thank everybody for staying up with us. And we are thank signing out, family. We, huh? You know, with us uh, throughout the evening for this discourse, this dissertation. All right? And shout out again, uh, you know, to the political prisoners, because they're all political prisoners that still are incarcerated. Um, a brother just came home uh, after 44 years of being incarcerated. I think he was one of the Angola three. You know, like, let's, let's, not, um, let's not minimize the sacrifice of our political prisoners by juxtaposing it with something, you know what I'm saying, that really doesn't add up to it. Like the brother did 44 years and the majority of it was in solitary confinement. All right, these people have forgotten about our forgotten political prisoners. Shout out to them. A lot of them are in Philadelphia as well. You know what I'm saying, well, Pennsylvania, incarcerated. Um, yeah, peace, love, and light. You know what I'm saying? And, and, and congratulations to that brother, you know, for gaining uh, his freedom, you know, because I don't wish incarceration on anybody. You know what I mean? Hopefully, it was a lesson that we learned. You know, we could see a level of growth that that brother went through. And I look forward to him, you know, uh, helping save a young male from falling into that situation. You know what I'm saying? I hope that, the, uh, you know, he puts his focus into that, his energy into that. And I hope that the friends that rallied around him, you know what I'm saying, to make this possible, are also going to rally around him if and when he decides to uh, utilize his platform to become an advocate for those who have no voice and are being lost and devoured by the system. All right? So peace, love, and light. Peace, family. You ain't never seen a man turn leg go with his hand. Yeah, yeah. You ain't never seen a man get a queen wet with a glance. Hey. What a turn, why, whole wide world, mind in my mind. Yeah. In and out of time, my light shine bright for the blind. Yeah. Something about the way I do it. 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 Yeah. Said I'm gonna be a millionaire soon, but I already knew it. Yeah. I'ma die the bullets fluid. Yeah. All this winning therapeutic. Yeah. Something about the way I do it. Yeah. Something about the way I do it. Yeah. They be trying to drain my energy up yeah. with the battery is not included. Yeah. Women trying to be recruited. Yeah. Let them do the then I bought it. Yeah. What is cute that this shit falling? Yeah. Something about the way I do it. I remember playing ring around the rosy. Now I got a pocket full of OZs. Why the dollars wallet full of old cheese? Got a Glock, a cock and pop a police. Block a block a block a boom, shock a lock a bottle. Shot him while he rock a rosary Got your mama watching out the nose, please Sloppy toppy while I'm trying to go sleep Something about the way I do it I ball out like a nude is hooping Or oh, well, a who's your student Got the problem, I'm a room is cubic I'm a superhuman You a decorated unit fusion Got the music booming Marijuana got me tumor losing I'm in my room secluded